Uh, so, hello and welcome to Athenium. Today, we have with us uh, Professor V. Krishna Arant of History Department from Sikkim University. And uh, we will be discussing with him uh, his recently launched book, uh, Between Freedom uh, to Unfreedom, uh, the history of press in independent India. Let me start with something, I mean, while I was going through your book, I mean, which I could see one the title of the book itself and uh, if i'm not wrong i mean the title of the book is suggestive of a journey of uh, of of uh, of the press in the, the independent india between freedom and unfreedom and uh, since you had a long association and let me also you know uh, 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 talk about a little bit about that one i mean your long stint with the hindu and then once you left Hindu, you taught at the uh, 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 Asian College of Journalism. So how, I mean, I mean, is it the book itself is reflective of these two parts? And then the third is where you sort of move to history, which you are currently also teaching history. Yara. And, and this long journey, one being part of the press itself and then teaching, you know, what media is and then the press as a discipline is an institution. How much it has, you know, you know, was, you know, involved in this, you know, making of a book or rather writing of this book? Um, well, I mean, I must actually confess that uh, the idea of this book hmm, was uh, something, uh, I mean, that came out uh, particularly in, in the last five or six years and particularly after 2014 when uh, there was a certain kind of a swing and most importantly the swing was pronounced in the television media uh, and uh, it was it was definitely also sort of you know seen in the press where uh, i mean i i thought that you know i mean there was this there was this uh, the the possibilities the possibilities that were actually sort of you know seen uh, in so far as the press was concerned as a tool as some kind of a facilitator in deepening democracy uh, it it was retreating i would i'd rather sort of you know i mean call it that you know it was retreating and uh, uh, in some sense as you, as you sort of you know i mean suggested uh, it was it, it, it uh, i mean it was essentially a kind of an attempt to look at the history of the press and trying to sort of, you know, locate. I mean, the thing is like, you know, it was, I mean, the, that there is a problem with the way that the press has turned into today, particularly in the, in the, in the, in the, in the time after sort of, you know, I mean, the elections of 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to me, they don't know. I mean, it wasn't uh, a, a development that could happen overnight. I mean, nothing in history actually opens. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, unravels overnight. And in some sense, you know, it was an attempt to look at, you know, where did, where were the roots of this unfreedom sort of, you know, laid or, you know, the seeds of this unfreedom. And uh, I mean, in that, in that kind of an attempt, you know, I could uh, actually look at um, sort of, you know, I mean, the possible, the point is like, you know, unlike the press in, uh, let's say, Europe, and where there was a certain kind of a, 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 a journey together kind of a thing between democracy and the press. And there was, in fact, you know, I mean, <clears throat> what I would call a Jubal Bandi. Uh, the case with India, in fact, you know, the press in India was born out of a struggle for freedom. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know that is something that uh, I mean, it struck me that like you know, it's sui generis that the, the experience of the press in India and vis-a-vis -vis democracy also. I mean, both these things were essentially drawn from a long struggle for freedom, both about sort of, you know, I mean, India's uh, struggle for independence. And it was so intertwined, the role of the press or uh, the newspapers in particular, vis-a-vis uh, -vis colonialism and so on and so forth. And at the same time, it wasn't as if, like, you know, I mean, the press was free at a point of time and then you know this retreat to unfreedom happened so when i when i tried to sort of you know look at this uh, it wasn't uh, i mean uh, i mean the, the the whole idea was to see that there are certain features which are inherent to the press or rather sort of you know the dynamics of the press uh, that probably sort of you know i mean renders it uh, an instrument of freedom as much as an instrument of unfreedom 
so in in some sense like you know it is and the the other important point that i would want to sort of you know stress out here is uh, the, the the book mm, is it's 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 not about sort of you know the end of history it wasn't about sort of you know talking about something of the past but you know that the concerns of the present and in that sense you know it was also an attempt and i think you know that is where i think um, uh, the, the the book uh, was involved i mean i think you know the importance of the book is it's an attempt to sort of you know locate where the press can still be sort of you know reinvented as an instrument for freedom for deepening democracy so in that sense i think you know it is it is not about writing an obituary of the press hmm, or of the media i mean in 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 another in another sense you know it is it is an attempt to sort of you know see where it is possible the poss the possibilities of freedom and you know the importance of you know reinventing a free press hmm, in the larger context of deepening democracy so i mean that is where that attempt was hmm. okay so let me posit a question i mean related to since we, you you know you gave us a you know overview of uh, that at the central at the at the center of this book is also to revisit this idea of press as it was formulated one during the freedom struggle and second i think i mean uh, the template of it is we can see uh, you know uh, being put into pieces in the constant assembly debate and uh, 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 and in fact it is you know something i mean which is written in your first and particularly in the second chapter where you are talking about the first amendment uh, mm -hmm. isn't it i mean uh, do you feel that how much it is reflective the post independent india which is uh, one i mean someone like nehru and you know other leaders in the part, party which you know held his you know camaraderie of this idea that a press has to be an instrument of 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 uh, 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 you know a, a pillar a sort of of a democracy which furthers the idea of democracy and then second there is a need to uh, keep press away from the sway of state mm. something mm. which 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 in fact i mean uh, uh, you know nehru for long has been labeled as you know who you know uh, influenced by the socialist politics which we we uh, we, we saw uh, unfolded in russia in, in many ways now this is something of a movement away from the socialist bloc in terms of how media was i'm sorry the press was imagined and then uh, the two uh, significant cases one is in uh, delhi and then uh, uh, in madras which uh, led to the first amendment and widened the scope because press was not seen as an independent uh, you know institution when the uh, freedom of speech and expression was formulated in the indian constitution now this ambiguity is something i mean which is you know uh, 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 you know follows in the independent india where one state is uh, 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 puts you know f you know that kind of effort is seen in the in the, in the first amendment then you have uh, the press commission report and you know the press itself and then the you have supreme court where this idea of what you know is the role of press and what is free press is being uh, you know uh, is hammered out uh, how 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 important was that first amendment to this you know uh, you know the, the future of what press would on Yes, I think you know. I mean, the I mean, whenever we talk about the First Amendment, uh, and you know, more particularly when we talk about the First Amendment in the context of, let's say, the press in India and the con in the Constitution, it's inevitable. It's inevitable that you know. I mean, uh, that you know, we need to sort of you know locate it in the context of the First Amendment principles of the U.S. Constitution. Now, I mean, it's 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 not just sort of you know. I mean, incidental in the uh, because. Um, both the the romesh tapper case you know which is what you know you referred to as the state of madras you know where the press freedom was sort to of be curtailed and the delhi case you know which incidentally was about you know the the mouthpiece of the rss uh, rather sort of you know i mean uh, in 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 both these cases the supreme court and incidentally the same set of judges uh, in a 4 is to 1 judgment both of them actually sort of you know i mean the i would i would rather say that like you know the supreme court uh, uh, stepped in 
Mm -hmm. where in fact you know the constituent assemblies an issue or that sort of you know i mean a point on which the constituent assembly choose to skirt over mm -hmm. in fact you know there was there was there were people inside the constituent assembly keti shah uh, dhirubhai shet and uh, i mean uh, i mean uh, the, 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 there were people who were making this point very specific that look the press needs to be treated very very specifically i mean put on a pedestal mm -hmm. and uh, the consensus or rather sort of you know i mean it it was that like you know let us let us make this freedom uh, a much much larger kind of a thing of you know the citizen and the citizens right rather than actually sort of you know i mean so so this debate uh, was sort of you know i mean this was something that you know the constituent assembly skirted or rather sort of you know uh, try to avoid and the supreme court by invoking the us case clause in this particular instance of romesh tapa justice uh, patanjali shastri actually sort of you know that's that mm, uh, 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 it 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 actually filled that space to sort of you know i mean bring the press in india at par with you know the us uh, the first amendment principles of the us constitution so i mean that is i think we you know very very important having said that uh, i think you know there was what 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 i think you know some scholars who rather call it you know the the dilemma that nehru actually the nehruvian leadership faced i mean if if when we when we look at all i mean each one of the three aspects of the first amendment one had to do with reservation for the depressed classes that is the shell caste in educational institution the other had to do with you know how to ensure an egalitarian agrarian structure particularly in terms of zamindari abolition and the third aspect was you know the insertions to 192 uh, in in some sense you know these were more importantly um, administrative concerns i mean there was this realization that the constitution that we have actually created is not really enabling or is is rather disabling uh, the larger force of democracy by the the independent indian state and you know the first amendment in fact was more of some kind of uh, 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 um, setting the setting setting the mechanics right rather what i would call the fine tuning of the edge and determined essentially by some of those crisis dilemma and you know when it comes to the freedom of the press there was what i would call some kind of an apprehension a mischief by two of the three judges of a full court of the patna high court in in uh, in the sangram case hmm? the sangram pamphlet case which uh, uh, which uh, created this kind of a thing that you know if romesh tapar is to be followed then anybody and everybody can actually get away with preaching murder preaching anything and everything and this this indeed was something that you know what uh, in fact you know i talk about this in the book where i say that like you know where i where i rely upon terry eagleton that nationalism uh, as long as it is a struggle uh, it actually sort of you know it is poetic there is the romantic poetry out in that and you know when the nation state is sort to be built the romance the romanticism is lost and it becomes prosaic in some sense i think you know the 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 the, the scope of enlarging the scope for uh, restricting freedom of expression that is what the first amendment was by bringing in public order into 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 uh, article 192 which i discussed was essentially some kind of a knee jerk reaction but having said that uh, the discussions during the first amendment bill and particularly nehru's intervention i mean towards the end of it i mean here was a situation when you know one of the newspaper editors deshbandhu gupta is telling the constituent assembly which assembled to sort of you know bring in this amendment is actually reciting rather sort of you know quoting what nehru said in the all india newspaper editors conference saying that i would rather sort of you know live with an irresponsible free press rather than a press that is curtailed kind of a thing and you know he's taunting nehru that like you know having said that sometimes ago in december now you are actually bringing in you know i mean this was actually said by nehru in 1950 um december and uh, in 1951 you know i mean there is there is the first amendment that is being brought 
and the, it was a taunt. And you know, in response to the taunt, Nehru actually sets the agenda. He says, like you know, yes, we need to talk about freedom, and you know, we also need to talk about you know, when whether freedom means mm, freedom of the press vis-a-vis -vis the state or you know, from the state, which is which is one essential aspect. But there is a, a far more important agenda that needs to be discussed, and that is freedom of the journalist. And in that sense, you know, Nehru actually brings this this whole gamut, which to me is very very significant, which is incidentally sort of you know one of the very very most important trust areas that there is there is something to do with the dynamics the functioning the internal dynamics of the press in india that had to do with uh, what 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 one can call sort of you know the meaning of freedom in a democracy meaning of free press in a democracy and that indeed i mean it was a promise that that Nehru makes towards the end of the debate, hmm, when the First Amendment is being moved, uh, perhaps on the 18th of May, when the debate sort of, you know, I mean, uh, the, the, the introduction of the bill and the debate over it is over. And Nehru follows it up immediately after the, the, the first election. Mind you, Nehru was, Nehru had actually made this commitment long before the first elected government was formed in this country. And what he does is he follows up on that commitment immediately after he said the press commission. And when we look at the scope of the first press commission, it essentially has to do with the political economy of the press in India. And when we look at the report, it's in fact, you know, to me, uh, I think, you know, I mean, this is perhaps one of the best uh, inquiry commissions in terms of, you know, understanding, in terms of unraveling a very, very deep philosophical question that, I mean, it, it, it was socialism, which, which was, um, I mean, if we look at the other two aspects of the First Amendment, reservations in higher education institution, which is what we can broadly put it as, you know, socialism in the social domain, egalitarian in the social domain. The land reforms legislations to be protected uh, by, by what is called the ninth schedule, which is again, I think, you know, I would call it socialism in the economic domain. But when it came to the press and the idea of freedom, it wasn't really sort of, you know, this idea of socialism was not central. On the contrary, when we look at, you know, the first press commission's report and the manner in which it goes, it, it actually sort of, you know, lays so much of stress on the fact that the press ought to remain a private enterprise. It, it cannot be a state controlled press, which again, uh, which is again something that like, you know, I mean, as early as the 1920s, in the 1920s, late 1920s, Nehru is actually making this very important distinction while he is actually impressed with what happened in, in let's say, revolutionary Soviet Union. Hmm? He's, he's very, very clear that, you know, it cannot be. And I, I would perhaps, I would perhaps actually sort of, you know, I mean, um, uh, present it that, you know, I mean, Nehru's, Nehru's approach and which is something that, you know, was reflected in that of the first press commission. Uh, the, 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 the whole thrust probably was more of sort of, you know, the idea of freedom. Hmm? Not in the socialist sense, but you know, in 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 the American sense, you know, the, in in the sense of the the First Amendment principles of the U.S. Constitution. So, in some sense, yes, I think you know, I mean, the state. It wasn't about the state, and you know, once again, as much as it is important, while the American uh, the, the the principle, the First Amendment principles in the American Constitution talks about that the Congress shall not enact a law that curtails the freedom of the press in the, in the case of the Indian constitution and you know in the larger context of what we what we can actually sort of you know locate is that the state shall enact laws to facilitate to further deepen the the functioning of a free press as much as like you know when we talk about secularism in the indian context like rajiv bhargava says that it is not about you know the state not interfering with religion it is not about sort of, you know, I mean, keeping religion and the state separate in the Indian context or rather in the context of, let's say, Asian societies. It's about the state actually ensuring the, the protection of everybody's right to any faith. So in some sense, like, you know, this is, again, very, very important. I think, you know, the First Amendment principles were further taken in the sense that, like, you know, the state as a facilitator 
to build a free press in India. And the two most important aspects of the recommendations of the First Press Commission report happens to be the the, the, the wages and the living and the working condition of the working journalist, which is something that is very, very significant today. I mean, when newspaper um, uh, owners and sort of, you know, I mean, television channel uh, barons are in a position to sort of, you know, tell their journalists to stay back at home, not to come for work the day after what we can call sort of, you know, the pink slip in the IT sector and so on and so forth. When, you know, that happens, the fact that, you know, the press commission addressed this as early as in 1953 is very important. The second aspect being that whether actually the press should actually become only a business enterprise. While remaining a business enterprise, the press cannot be treated as say manufacturing or shampoo is that the press has something very significant a role to play in democracy. So to me, I think you know that was very, very striking. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for the, the crux of the book you have put, put out there, I mean and which 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 I can also, you know, just uh, uh, if I have to summarize in one of the lines I mean taken from your own book that the press was uh, it did one uh, to ensure that it you know enriched the democracy but also it evolve as a business model mm -hmm. and that is essentially I mean one of the centerpiece of your book. Uh, and, uh, let me add you know the question which uh, to, to to what we were discussing. I mean uh, the uh, uh, first press commission report and like you said I mean it is. Uh, in the post-independent India, uh, along with the first press commission report, and th there is another report which came came Kaka Kalikar uh, commission report, which was to talk about the you know the the, the, the uh, other backward classes, and which was actually shelved and uh, and uh, never you know sort of uh, took any kind of uh, you know shape in terms of discourse as well as uh, you know in a, as an academic ex sorry as an administrative exercise on the contrary and since we are talking on uh, how some of the ideas which were central in the making of nation were put into test in the post independent india and in fact the all the three amendments which you have talked about uh, uh, sorry, the first amendment, the three articles which were amended on on uh, on the land reforms and uh, and and uh, the uh, press commission. Uh, sorry, the freedom of uh, press uh, with reasonable restriction, and the third on reservation. There, if we see the post-independent trajectory, and my question is in relation to that, Indian state is basically an interventionist state, like you said. I mean, it's a facility. Uh, it it reflects that dilemma. Of, of, of the an ambiguity on, on such important issue. On one hand, uh, Nehru and uh, you know, uh, other members of the Congress party, as well as I mean, members of uh, First Press Commission report, were conscious that press has to remo remain in the hand of private proprietor. While, while also conscious of another fact that this very the fact that it is in the hand of private proprietor, it also means that the press ultimately uh, would, you know, uh, progress towards this path of unfreedom, something which you talk in your book. Now, uh, now if we see in the 50s, and this is essentially when, you know, you see the making of a nation, this, you know, what happens in the constant assembly debate. It, can you just uh, tell us, Simon, the part from, uh, from 70s and 80s, how this unraveling of press happened, something which sort of uh, the press commission report has envisioned, I mean, in, 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 the, in, in the document which was produced on two uh, parts. One, the press has to remain a business model, that, but that very business model should not become uh, a mm -hmm. sort of, a, a, you know, thrown in the path of, uh, furthering this idea of democracy to which press was very central to it. Well, I think, you know, the press commission perhaps actually sort of you know, hit, hit the nail on its head and, you know, identified the, 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 the problem, the centrality of the problem, or rather sort of, you know, I mean, uh, uh, did sort of, you know, perceive as to where this, this whole uh, sort of, you know, trajectory into unfreedom can happen with what it called monopolistic tendencies of the press. Monopoly, the press has a monopoly. 
right right <clears throat> so yeah and it 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 i mean i think you know what, the, the reason i said that you know the first press commission report is is a document that actually sort of you know is is perhaps the most important document that needs to be studied is it did not really stop there but it also looked at the way out and the way out that is the pages and prices order or rather schedule that like you know i mean it, i it, it 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 is very important to sort of you know i mean restrict the scope for advertisement revenue at one level and at the same time also ensure that the cover price or the subscription price does not really go to to i mean too high that so in in terms of sort of you know i mean the newspaper should be able to reach its people and the people also shall not actually sort of you know get something very free right i mean this this whole yeah. whole oh, 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 i mean it was it was it, it was a very important kind of a judgment and analysis where actually talks about and uh, the the, uh, the roots of it like basically it came from a conference of the small and medium newspapers where the working journalists actually put forward this thing that like you know there has to be some kind of a of a, of a balance between cover price circulation price and advertisement revenue that the business or rather sort of you know um, uh, i mean institutions that are running sort of you know consumer business shall not determine what the newspaper should be mm. and the press commission actually refines this into a in fact you know this is something that like you know i talk about in chapter 3 where it's it's actually sort of you know working as to how much money should go into it's factoring in you know the the need for a profit otherwise like you know altruism alone is not going to sort of you know lead and you know they very clearly say during the freedom struggle apart from sort of you know business concerns and profit motive there was the altruistic kind of thing that that demand the fight for independence and it also recognized that altruism alone is not going to sort of you know serve the purpose because democracy has to be served in a larger context of let's say uh, uh, freedom and uh, the pages in the price order and i think you know when i have elaborated this this aspect of the press commission report uh, essentially because like you know i mean as and when we come to sort of you know look at let's say one of the very very uh, darkest uh, times in terms of sort of you know the the, the era of unfreedom hmm? in, uh, in, uh, in 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 that context being the emergency the 1970s the mid 1970s Yeah. we very clearly see that like you know business models that have actually that had arrived by then in terms of sort of you know successful business models and arrived because in you know, the supreme court in 1961 62 in the sakal newspaper case is striking down the pages and prices order in the name of freedom mind in the name of freedom and you know what emerges out of it is there are one set of newspapers that have that i mean that that are that are there in spite of the commitment to freedom and certain ideas of freedom are essentially sort of you know i mean business models which are to make some kind of a money not huge profits but still making money with large in, uh, establishments in terms of you know printing machinery and so on and so forth dependent primarily on advertisement from the government and the emergency having taught a lesson that if you are a business model of this kind the possibility for you to resist a regime that decides to clamp down which is what the emergency regime was all about hmm? they can actually sort of you know clamp down and you know get you to dance to their tunes by denying you advertisements government advertisements it happened to the indian express the statesman in fact you know i mean the 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 kind of elaborate tables and the list of the emergency regime made i mean it's it's there recorded by the shah commission i have produced that as an appendix in this book now it also sort of you know tells us another story there was still sort of you know sections of the press like the uh, bhumi putra that came out from uh, ahmedabad from the sabarmati ashram or you have you know this this venture by meenu masani freedom first coming out of bombay playing a similar role that you know tilak kesari and um, um, bapu's mahatma gandhi's uh, young india played in 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 the early years in terms of the fight against section 124a 
they were not business models they were actually political platforms and in some sense i think the first press commission was right that you know it need what you need is what uh, I mean, not not huge newspaper chains, and the business model also has to be something that is far more localized, far more participative, and more importantly, some kind of a cooperative venture where the reader is also participating in the making of the newspaper, not just sort of in an advertisement revenue-driven model. And which I think you know the emergency was one one moment when you know when that lesson was taught hmm, that. the possibility of a free press can or unleashing the possibility of unleashing the press as an instrument for freedom is is more potent where actually you know where it, it's not monopoly business where it's not a profit making venture on the contrary that you know i mean uh, uh, i mean some kind of you know a mercenary zeal is very very important and what i noticed in in the course of the study and you know that is where like you know i mean after the emergency i come with this very very long chapter talking about the glorious record of the press in the 1980s and which is perhaps and you i mean i think you know in the, in the, in the course of you know your question you raised about the kaka kaleka commission report mm -hmm. and the 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 second important aspect in that trajectory being the mandal commission report and the free press actually sort of you know retreats to and freedom once again at, at, i mean the 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 rupture movement i would actually say and i have identified happens to be the declaration to implement uh, the recommendations of the mandal commission report so in some sense yes i think you know i mean the first amendment all the three aspects of the first amendment were very very important and they were intertwined and this is the story that i have tried to sort of you know tell in this book okay and when i say that you know between freedom and unfreedom and I, i mean it it is that like you know i mean if this history i mean if this lesson is learned from history that if monopoly and the press is identified as the threat to freedom then it is possible that the press can actually sort of you know once again bounce back to becoming an instrument of freedom in independent india uh, this is this is very interesting in fact uh, reading through your book i mean this is a small anecdote i i, I, I can still recall and then uh, uh, since since we are talking about this trajectory also of, of between freedom and unfreedom that the ingenious ways in which uh, press used to uh, raise their number of newspaper they were selling and since if the the number of newspaper they were selling i mean would uh, ultimately result in you know coming out of advertisement one was to give away free newspaper which they never disclosed that the newspaper were uh, given free this is very similar to what we obviously i mean this is much more magnanimous in the nature and the you know the uh, the, the paid news it's it's again i mean very ingenious i mean way it was done which is you know very very interesting because i mean like you said i mean it's not teleological i mean it's not the end of that idea of press i mean 2014 doesn't mark the end it just mark this you know a sort of a circle of this oscillation where media and and press you know tends to you know move into the direction of unfreedom uh, anyways i mean the uh, 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 we will continue this discussion. I mean, in the next part of 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 uh, the book, which has been launched recently by uh, uh, written by Professor Krishna Anand. In the meanwhile, you can also find the link uh, to buy this book in the description. Uh, and uh, uh, I hope, I mean, you will join us again uh, for 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 continuing this wonderful engagement on on, on this book, which actually is. more of an answer to this question i mean as much as since i could take up that book that uh, i mean two ways i mean one those you know of of quite uh, kind of noises that are made regarding this post truth society the death of truth it's i mean professor krishna anand's book actually makes a statement it is not the death of the truth it's sort of a journey through which press has you know gone and you, you know went through and this journey sort of starts in the during the colonial struggle and and the roots of or idea of a press has some you know form of idealism and idealism is necessary for press to survive as an instrument of change and to further the idea of democracy in india but we will come back 
I think that the second part of this this uh, you know series over this book again. I mean, uh, let me remind you the book is between freedom and unfreedom. Uh, press in independent india you can find the link for the book i mean in the, in the description given below thank you for those uh, who joined us today if you liked our video and you wish to continue watching it please like share and subscribe to athenium